Now for patho basics. As you know, blood sugar naturally increases when we eat. The pancreas releases insulin from the beta cells and also enzymes to help break down food for fuel. So remember, insulin puts sugar and potassium into the cell, making our hungry cells really happy. Now when we give insulin, both sugar and potassium decrease in the blood since it's going into the cell. Now if we don't have food, then the pancreas has a backup plan. It releases glucagon hormone to break down stored glucose, aka glycogen, in the liver, which increases sugar in the blood. Glycogen is kind of like a glucose brick wall. So remember, glucagon means glucose gone out of the liver into the bloodstream, which increases blood sugar. So again, when blood sugar is high, like after you eat, insulin is released. And when blood sugar is low, like when you exercise or forget to eat, glucagon is released. So in diabetes, insulin is the problem here, guys. Type 1, we have none. Since the body has killed its own pancreas, it produces no insulin. And people are born with it. It's an autoimmune disease. So type 1, you can pass on to your son, since it's genetical. And these patients are insulin dependent for life. Big key word. Now in type 2, remember few insulin receptors work, since the problem is you, your diet and lifestyle. The high in sugars and sitting sedentary lifestyle. We're talking junk food like sodas, white breads, and sweets, which eventually leads to obesity. And our cells now are lazy and overused. The insulin receptor sites are like an overused keyhole. They've basically been worn out and now just ignore the insulin. This is called insulin resistance. So just think in type 2, the cells are through. They quit responding. Now the risk factors for developing diabetes. Guys, in type 1, there are none since it's mostly genetical. You can pass it on to your son. And in type 2, the problem is you, your diet, and a little bit of genetics. So we screen for metabolic syndrome, which increases the risk of not only diabetes, but also heart disease and stroke. Now this is big on exams in the NCLEX. So we use the acronym BOL for metabolic syndrome. So guys, three or more criteria means we have metabolic syndrome. So B for blood pressure meds and high BP, over 130 systolic. Our next B is for blood sugar medications or high blood sugar over, keyword here guys, write this down, 100 fasting, over 100 fasting. O is for obesity, big keywords here guys, waist size over 35 for females and over 45 for males. And lastly, L is for lipids that are high, this is not good. We're talking high cholesterol panel, write these numbers down, 200, 150, and 100. All should be low except the HDLs, our happy lipids. That one should be over 40. Now guys, if these numbers are off, it could mean metabolic syndrome. And this contributes to insulin resistance in type 2 where the cells are through. Again, like an overused lock. The cells stop responding from the overuse of insulin. Now I can already see questions coming up on your exam and NCLEX. So I recommend writing this bowl memory trick out at least 15 times the week of your exam. Now to help you, here's a common practice question. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.